So we're going to talk about things like systems. Okay. The system is that part of the universe that we're studying. These are going to be fairly common sense definitions, but they're important. And when you get to a problem set, really nailing down what the system is, not more nor less in terms of the amount of stuff that's part of the system, is going to be often very crucial. Okay? So you've got the system. For instance, it could be a person. I'm the system. I could be a system. It could be a, a hot coffee in a thermos. Okay? So the coffee and the milk and whatever else you like in your coffee would be the system. It could be a glass of water with ice in it. It's a fine system. Uh, volume of air in a part of a room. Take a four liters on this corner of the room. That's my system. Okay. Then, uh, after you define what your system is, whatever is left over of the universe is the surroundings. So if I'm the system, then everything else is the surroundings. You are my surroundings. Saturn is my surroundings. Right? As far as you can go in the universe, that's part of the surroundings. And then between the system and the surroundings is the boundary. And the boundary is, is a surface <coughs> that's uh, real, like the outside of my skin, or the inner wall of the thermos that has the coffee in it. Or it could be an imaginary boundary. For instance, I can imagine that there's a, a boundary that surrounds the four liters of air that's sitting in the corner there. It doesn't have to be a real container to contain it. It's just an imaginary boundary there. And where you place that boundary becomes important. So for instance, for the, uh, the thermos with the coffee in it, if you place the boundary in the inside wall of the glass or the outside wall of the glass in the inside of the thermos, that makes a difference. Different heat capacity, etc. So this is, becomes where defining the system and the boundaries and everything becomes important. You've got to place the boundary at exactly the right place. Otherwise, you've got a bit too much in your system or a bit too little. Okay, more definitions. The system can be an open system or it can be a closed system or it can be isolated. The definitions are also important here. Okay, an open system, as the name describes, allows mass and energy to freely flow through the boundary. Okay. Mass and energy flow through boundary. Mass and energy flow. I'm an open system, right? Water vapor goes through my skin. I'm hot compared to the air of the room. Or cold if I'm somewhere that's warm. So energy can go back and forth. The thermos with a lid on top is not an open system. Hopefully your coffee is going to stay warm and or hot in the thermos, right? It's not going to get out. So the thermos is not an open system. In fact, the thermos is an isolated system. The isolated system is the opposite of the open system. No mass and no energy can flow through the boundary. The closed system allows energy to transfer through the boundary, but not mass. So a closed system would be, for instance, a glass of ice water with an ice cube in it with a lid on top. Right? The glass is not very... Insulating, energy can flow across the glass, but I put a lid on top and so the water can't get out. Right, that's a closed system. Energy goes through the boundary, but nothing else. Okay, important definitions, even though they may sound really kind of dumb, all right? But they're really important because when you get the problem, figuring out whether you have an open, closed, or isolated system, what's the surroundings, what's the boundary, what is the system, that's the first thing to make sure that is clear. If it's not clear, the problem is going to be impossible to solve. 